picture number nine can be done in two ways. So first of all, if you can recognize that this limit is actually Newton's quotient, this is really asking for the derivative of log x. And that derivative is 1 over x. And then we would evaluate that, that derivative at x equals 2e. So y prime at 2e would be equal to 1 over 2e. So the answer is a. So that's one way this could be done. Now, if we looked at this and didn't recognize this as Newton's quotient, we could still look at this and say, well, if I substitute 0 in for h and 2e for x, I'm going to end up with a situation where I have the limit as h goes to 0 of this expression is going to be 0 over 0. Well, that's the condition we need for L'Hopital. So we could apply L'Hopital's in this case. Now, you have to be careful, though, because the variable in question is h. x is actually a fixed value. So as I let x go to 0, sorry, h go to 0, h is my variable, which I'm going to differentiate by. So then it looks like this. The limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over x plus h minus, since x is a fixed value, this differentiates to 0. Now, it might be more clear if we just replace that with 2e. And that's the same thing. The derivative of the denominator is just 1. As I let h go to 0, I end up with 1 over x. And then substituting x equals 2e, I get the same result. Okay, So the answer still is a. For number 10, we're being given the first derivative and we're being asked to evaluate the third derivative. Really, it's just the second derivative of the first derivative. And we can just keep track of it this way. We can just find, first of all, the second derivative. And we end up with 4x cubed minus 6x squared. Uh, and that's it. So we want to do this again because we need to have the third derivative. So we're going to differentiate again. So d3y over d x cubed. This is going to be 12x squared minus 12x. So there's my third derivative, which is essentially the second derivative of my original expression. And I want to then evaluate this expression when x is equal to 2. So I'm just going to plug in x equals 2. I end up with 12 times 4. Minus 12 times 2. And that's going to give me a value of, looks like 24. So my answer is B. For number 11, this is a piecewise function. So it's, it's not a bad idea to just figure out what does this piecewise function look like. Okay, it's a parabola all the way to 0. If we hit 0, x is equal to negative 1, so we have some point down here. And for greater than 0, it's just a linear function that looks like that. Okay, and it says, what for the function defined... What's the area from negative 1 to positive 1? So we want to integrate this from negative 1 to 0. But it's undefined at 0. However, there is area there. So it is. we have to be careful here because we can't go to 0. So we have to use a limit. So it's going to look like this. Now, whether you use a limit or not, you'll get the same answer. So this is just a formal way of doing this. So if you want to avoid the limit, 
and understand what you're doing, that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to do this properly. So I'm going to shade this area from the right hand, left hand side all the way to zero. So I'm approaching zero from the left hand side. And I want to know the area from negative one to as I approach the a value and a will approach zero. And the function I'm going to shade is the x squared function. So it looks like that. So this is a formal way of doing it. So this will ends up being the limit as a approaches zero from the negative side. Okay, and this becomes the antiderivative. And we're just going to let that go to zero. And again, just to reiterate, Although this is a proper way of doing it, the answer to this does not depend on whether we use the limit or not. So as I plug this in, I'm going to let a go to 0, so I'm going to end up with 0 minus, I'm going to plug negative 1 in, so negative 1 cubed over 3, and that works out to be positive 1 third. Okay, so the area under that curve there is positive 1 third. And then I'm just going to split it up into this section here. I had to split it up anyways because this is a piecewise function. But because I have that point there, to do it properly, I really should use a limit. So this area in here is going to be the area from 0 to 1. But since we can't technically go to 0, I'm just going to use a limit to do that. I'm going to go from the positive side. It's going to be from a to positive 1. And it's going to be the integral of x dx. Okay, so then this becomes, when I anti-differentiate this, I end up with the limit as a approaches 0 from the positive side. Again, the fact that I'm using a limit doesn't really make any difference other than it's a formality I should observe. So I plug in 1, and I subtract when a is 0, so I'm going to end up with 1 half. So that's the green area, is an area of 1 half. So the net area, when I integrate that whole thing, the net area is going to be when I add those two areas together, so 1 third, 1 third plus 1 half. That works out to be the answer 5, 6. And so A is the correct solution.